Well, Patrick Zwao, a Vert Business School academic and nephew of the former Zimbabwe uh, president, uh, joins us via Zoom to share his memories, legacy, and just how Zimbabwe is evolving in his aftermath. Mr. Zwao, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Good evening, Sipio. Thank you very much for, for hosting us. Now, uh, first of all, what's your analysis of Zimbabwe under President Emerson Nagagwa? Is his leadership a continuation of the Mugabe regime, as some critics and experts have suggested? I, I think, uh, 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 firstly, let me, let me maybe say a few words about how we feel as a family. Uh, we fondly remember with love, respect and affection uh, President Mugabe. We are really thankful and um, are glad for the legacy that he left us. Um, and as a family, we commit that uh, we will be true to the principles uh, that he, he, he lived by. And uh, uh, on our part, we believe that we should not uh, sacrifice principle on the altar of expediency. Um, with regards to whether President um, Nangagwa is uh, is doing a good job or not? I, I think uh, it is it is painfully obvious that uh, Emerson Nangagwa is out of his depth. Uh, some of us that uh, worked with him knew he did not have the capacity. We also knew that he, he, by nature he is not the type of person that would be in a position to unite. But I think what is probably more more, more, more dangerous is the fact that um, the, 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 the cabal that is, uh, has taken over um, the levers of power in Zimbabwe is, uh, is influenced by a mentality which makes them believe that because they fought militarily in the liberation of uh, Zimbabwe in the 1970s, they are the stockholders of Zimbabwe, and they have said so. And to that extent, they don't believe that any other voice within Zimbabwe uh, is a legitimate voice that can talk about the direction that the, that the country can move in. And President Mugabe at some point tried to really reason with them, and unfortunately, he, is not, he was not able to do that. And they, they are now uh, running the country uh, oblivious of the fact that uh, in this day and age, in the year 2020, the wishes of the people are, are, are sacrosanct. Uh, you have in, in cases where people have um, voted for members of parliament, and those members of parliament are being uh, withdrawn uh, through some form of dubious uh, uh, a judicial uh, system. So it's 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 actually quite sad um, that the people of Zimbabwe have lost quite significantly uh, the gains that they achieved in 1980 to be able to to be liberated, and the gains that um, they achieved uh, in in the year 2000 with the land reform program. When you say that uh, President Nagagwa is out of his depth, isn't that perhaps uh, you know, a, a disingenuous assertion? Because a former president, uh, Mr. Robert Mugabe, oversaw an economic decline. He oversaw a high cost of living uh, with a three-digit percentage hyperinflation, a clam down of dissent. And uh, ostensibly, uh, Mr. Nagagwa has inherited that failed state. Uh, but uh, you see, if you have a capacity to be able to turn things around, you would have been able to turn things around. He doesn't have the capacity to turn things around. That is that is painfully obvious. Uh, but what is what makes it even more painfully obvious is that uh, the a significant uh, component of the international community was willing to give President Mnangagwa the benefit of the doubt. Uh, there was so much um, negative sentiment against President Mugabe that uh, people were willing to support President Mnangagwa just to prove a point. Uh, but, he, but, you know, he's, he's squandered that, uh, that, that, that particular opportunity. But I think one of the things that we, 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 we tend to maybe not to remember, and I, and I, do, and I can understand why, why some people uh, do not remember this, but... Um, 
are some of the things, the good things that President Mugabe did. Yes, definitely there were certain things that um, a lot of people are, are unhappy about, but the biggest uh, part of President Mugabe's legacy was his approach towards education. The fact that education is such an empowering uh, activity, it has allowed, uh, provided an opportunity for Zimbabweans who unfortunately have had to go out of Zimbabwe to be able to earn a living, to, to at least be able to sustain themselves, to at least be able to also send remittances to Zimbabwe. So yes, definitely there were certain issues that did not go as well as they should have gone, but there were, but there were a few things that I think, uh, as, as a nephew of President Mugabe, I want to be able to recognize that, well, his approach towards education uh, and his approach towards um, just the view that as black Africans, we should be able to sustain our ourselves was one of the positives of his legacy. But the, that be as it may, uh, President Mugabe is no longer uh, available to be able to make any corrections. Uh, Zimbabwe is now looked to Emerson Munangagwa. And the reality is that uh, Emerson Munangagwa cannot uh, assist. Uh, Emerson Munangagwa cannot move uh, Zimbabweans out of the challenges that they have. And the, and, the, and, the, and the main reason is simply because Emerson Munangagwa refuses to acknowledge that there are other Zimbabweans that have got capacity to come up with other, with other ideas. He just needs to be able to listen to people. And uh, his inability to listen to people is one of the reasons why you now see his deputy chief secretary, George Charamba, uh, going out and actually accusing the SABC of being a puppet of the U.S. Embassy, which is which is totally totally ridiculous, um, and uh, this is really informed by the by the fact that uh, that regime that is in Harare does not have the capacity to be to listen to be told that look guys you are in the wrong direction if somebody says they're in the wrong direction then they they, they become abusive i mean this afternoon uh, uh, george charamba was quite misogynistic against uh, the editor of the sabc sophie mukwena and later on he was try then trying to to uh, to to suggest that his misogynistic uh, insults were aimed at me but be that as it may, uh, even if you want to say that you are not attacking uh, Madam Sophie Mokwena and you are attacking Patrick Joao, but you are attacking on the basis of uh, of uh, of gender, that is 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 just totally uh, unacceptable. It is totally uh, abhorrent. Well, Mr. Joao, you went to town describing uh, all the good deeds that uh, former President Robert Mugabe did for Zimbabwe. And uh, sure, um, you know, those good deeds and good works that he has done for the country cannot go unnoticed. I mean, the country became at some point uh, the breadbasket of Africa and uh, it saw, uh, you know, that there was a high literacy rate in Zimbabwe and uh, so many other, uh, you know, uh, uh, good, ini great initiatives. But then uh, the issue of human rights abuses and the claim down on dissent was well documented under his rule. Yes, uh, I, 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 I can't look. Uh, I'm here as a nephew of President Mugabe, and uh, as his nephew, I I want at a personal level to remember him for the good that he has done. Uh, and uh, I can't be, I can't, in all honesty, uh, stand in front of you and claim that I'm a neutral arbiter on Robert Mugabe's uh, legacy. He's my uncle. I, I loved him dearly. I still love him dearly. And uh, when I look at him, I, I, I pretend, I, I prefer rather to look at what he did well. And I recognize that there are certain things that he could have done better. But uh, for me to be able to smile and think about him, I think about it in I think about him in terms of uh, the good that he has done, uh, and and uh, it becomes quite difficult for me to be able to to really focus on uh, on where he could have done better. Yes, I acknowledge he's a, he's, he's human. He's fallible. He was fallible. He was by no stretch of the imagination uh, a saint. Uh, and uh, for for some of the things that did not go well, I'm 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 almost certain that uh, uh, where he is, he wishes they could have gone better.
But I think his art was in the correct place. I think uh, President Mugabe was a Pan-Africanist. He believed in uh, what uh, he was doing. And uh, where things did not go well, uh, it is it is a shame. And I, we, we, we wish that uh, we, as Zimbabwe, we get to a situation where we go through some form of uh, truth and reconciliation process so that we're able to heal, so that we're able to move forward. We have those provisions within the constitution of Zimbabwe, but unfortunately they are being, uh, they're not being allowed the opportunity to be implemented. Well, fair enough. Your bias towards him is, uh, you know, ostensibly attributed uh, to the family ties. But then the fact that Zimbabwe's economy improved under a power sharing agreement between Mugabe and the o opposition movement for democratic change. But uh, once after that deal crumbled, then the economy went on a downward spiral for over a decade. What does this then tell you about the leadership of Mr. Mugabe? I, I think what it tells you about is, is about uh, the structure of leadership as opposed to the person. If once we get into a situation where we are where we provide and enable every Zimbabwean to be part of the governance of the country, then it means that uh, that governance structure, that governance framework becomes that much more robust. So uh, we have unfortunately a, a, a political system. Which uh, which is a winner takes all uh, in, in in all his, in terms and purposes, and that does not really allow for for a better uh, way of, uh, of of managing the social, economic, and uh, cultural activities of uh, of, of the country. Definitely, uh, that period between 2009 and 2013. Was a, was, a, was, was a period of um, relative stability. It was a period during which, uh, you know, the economy improved significantly. And uh, a, a large component of that improvement in the economy was that the MDC uh, formations that were part of government provided a, a significant check and balance. And that is what really we need. We, we, we should not have the system that the current leadership or the military cabal uh, that is in charge of the country wants where there is no opposition. The absence of opposition in any country uh, means that uh, governance really uh, uh, processes are severely, severely compromised. Mr. Zhao, isn't it ironic that on the anniversary of Mr. Mugabe's death, who was pretty much at the center of the controversial and often bloody land grabs over 20 years ago, uh, now there's news that the government has finally agreed to compensate the white farmers whose land was forcefully taken away from them. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Well, that's not uh, really ironic because I think if we if you look at uh, what transpired in the run up to the coup, uh, what Emerson Nangagwa was trying to do uh, was to get international support for the coup. So what 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 he's talking about in terms of uh, is in terms of compensation were some of the arrangements that uh, they were talking about uh, with some of the foreign. Uh, uh, powers around sub around supporting Emerson Munangago for him to be able to effect a coup, uh, but um, those, those foreign powers have basically now realized that uh, Emerson Munangago is is not the person that um, they they can literally they they can do business with, and um, this is really just another. Uh, smoke and thunder, mirrors and uh, so on. It's an, it's, it's an illusion that seeks to then give people the impression that uh, something significant is going on. What is actually even worse uh, is, um, is the way the Wangen National Park, Zimbabwe's biggest uh, animal uh, uh, reserve, has now been handed over to, to coal mining. And uh, th this is really uh, so, so, so dangerous in that uh, you now have a situation where some of our pristine uh, wildlife is now being destroyed specifically because the military regime that is in, uh, in Arare 
uh, simply wants to to grab as much wealth as they possibly can without looking into into the future of Zimbabwe, without looking into the in, in, into the environment, without making sure that there is an economy, there is a society that is uh, that is able to to thrive before beyond them. And how big is this wildlife reserve that will be exploited to give way for uh, coal mining? Sorry, I missed the first part of your question. How big is this wildlife reserved that will be exploited uh, to give way for coal mining? There is the Wangan the, the National, uh, uh, National Park, uh, which is to the west of, um, of, of Zimbabwe. And uh, this is the national park that houses the Victoria Falls, which is a world, which is a world uh, heritage site. And uh, they are now, um, we, 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 we've had situations over the past uh, couple of weeks where there's been significant numbers of elephants that have died as a result of some form of bacterial uh, infection, which, 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 which uh, I'm, I'm not an environmentalist, but uh, given the fact that now you've got huge, huge coal mining uh, operations going on there, I mean, they, 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 it, it's, it's quite possible that the water is being poisoned. So it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. And uh, the, the fourth estate, which is basically the media, which really ought to be assisting the opposition and assisting Zimbabweans to make sure that these things are, 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 are highlighted, is in a state of fear and panic. I'm sure you, you are all aware of the incarceration of Opal Chimono. I'm sure you're also all aware of, um, of the abduction of, uh, of Tawanda Mchehiwa. And Tawanda Mchehiwa was abducted together with his two other cousins and uh, his aunt because the regime was looking for from Dundu Zimatu to the editor of Zim Live, who, who, who was the which, which which publication highlighted the COVID nineteen um, scandals and uh, corruption that was going on in Zimbabwe. Now uh, there is no journalist I believe in, in in Zimbabwe right now who is not feeling unsafe, not just for themselves, but they're also feeling unsafe for their families. And when you see the deputy chief secretary, this is the second most senior public uh, official, an unelected public official, attacking the SABC as an, as an entity, attacking uh, the person of uh, Madam Sophie Mokwena. The message is very clear to all other journalists in Zimbabwe is that please uh, be careful for your own safety and for your own security. And uh, if, if you are not, your life is at risk. If your life is not at risk, then the lives of your, of your, of, of your family members are at risk. So we, we, as, as, a, as a nation and as a region, okay. we hope uh, and pray that the ANC is able to, to knock some sense into some of the their liberation uh, movement colleagues who have effectively gone wrong because what is happening across the Limpopo right now is that there is a liberation movement that has effectively gone wrong. Uh, it is, it is Mr. Joao, like we are out of time, like, unfortunately. Like, like, but then like, before like, I let you go, um, the country has seen a change of leadership from Mr. Mugabe to uh, Emerson Nagagwa. But then the situation remains the same in Zimbabwe. Nothing has changed. If anything, the economic, political and social fabric uh, has worsened. Is the ZANU-PF party the problem here? Yes. It, 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 what is the problem is the military. The military has taken over the ZANU-PF as a political party. Uh, people within ZANU-PF do not have a say anymore. That is it. Uh, what has happened is that there was a military coup that was uh, effected in, uh, in, in November 2017. And it's, it is effectively the gun that is dictating how the country gets run. And that gun, unfortunately, is not willing to listen to reason. Okay, Mr. Joao, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time.